And we are back with another episode of <laughs> Leveling in WoW Rogue Edition. Or Undead Rogue Edition, I guess. Uh, we actually got kind of lucky, because I remember last episode, I said that I wanted to pick up professions and sell some stuff. And as luck would have it, Gordo here, who roamed about and interrupted our outro last episode, actually is a vendor and he can repair stuff, so we sold all of our junk to him. And... Uh, Theresa Sallow here is a profession trainer, so we picked up skinning and leatherworking. We haven't done anything with them yet. I haven't learned anything special, just the basic stuff. But at least we have the uh, we have the professions, so that we can use them going forward. And we'll just have to remember to um, skin the skinnable mobs that we kill, because we're certainly going to be killing everything um, that we can. <laughs> so all we have to do. Uh, is kill 10 Terrace Fall farmers, collect 10 of their pumpkins to really, you know, cripple the pumpkin economy, and uh, bring a dude a murloc on a leash for whatever freaky shit he's into. Should be fun. Let's see, can we get this pumpkin without him aggroing onto us? No, but we can get it before he gets to us. Out of here, farmers. I just want to take your pump. Well, actually, I guess I have to kill ten of them anyways, so. <laughs> Nine more of you, please attack me. And then screw off. That would be quite convenient. Um, for, like, when we get two quests that require us to gather things in an area and kill a certain amount of enemies in the same area, I try to go for the gathering things first. Just so that way we don't spend any extra time killing enemies that we no longer need to. So like if I were to focus on killing the farmers first and not gather any pumpkins, uh, we'd probably end up having to kill a few extra farmers because they're near the pumpkins that we're trying to get to because we had ignored them. If that makes sense. Because these guys do respawn after all. And we're definitely going to have to use our... Uh, cannibalized after this. This is actually a super useful ability uh, as a racial for somebody who's not don't want to attack the bat who's not using heirlooms and whatnot or doesn't have a self heal once we get to 14 we'll have a self heal but that's still a ways off is dude wearing a shirt? Yes, he is. It's just very close to the color of his skin, so I couldn't quite tell. He's just out here in pants and boots. Boots and pants and boots and pants. Uh, tilling the field. Alright, looks like that's all the pumpkins for that uh, little plot of land. You can get the rest over here. Right, I totally forgot to mention stealth, too, that we got at the end of the episode. Stealth does exactly what you think it would. Just makes us invisible. Means we can sneak past mobs much easier and like we can go like right next to these farmers and they won't attack us. That's one really nice thing about being a rogue and a feral druid. Like you'll see he turned to like face us just because we were kinda close to him for too long. But he won't aggro onto us unless we sat there for a long time. But yeah, it'll be nice for sort of skipping over uh, enemies we don't want to fight later. You can't use it in while you're in combat, but you do get an ability to, that causes you to be stealthed and drop combat later on. It's a pretty useful ability. Uh, let's see. I need to actually put my build is on my hot bar here, just because you can attack from stealth. It decloaks you, obviously, but we don't want to have to unstealth and then attack to do anything. We just want to be able to attack straight from stealth. Alright, so one more pumpkin, and uh, three more farmers after this guy. Oh, come on, don't pocket sand me. <laughs> Alright, let's get this pumpkin. And then fast forward through the last three farmers. There you go. 
Just just go peacefully into the night. All right, let's go get this uh, Murloc. Just over here. We're actually just going to stealth past this Scarlet Warrior. He's level 7 and I'm level 5. Not that I... I mean, I could probably fight him. But it would just take too much time. And being stealthy is what a rogue is all about anyways. Okay, so I don't think it matters what kind of Murloc we get, just as long as we get one of them. Let me just make sure. Yeah. So I just have to get this guy below half, I think. Maybe it, maybe to a third. I'm not sure. Let's try using it. Okay, not yet. There we go. You're coming with me, boy. Now we have a little murloc following us around. Not actually on a leash. Ooh, is that a rare? That is a rare. We're definitely going to kill this for the extra experience. Maybe he'll drop a bag for us too. I think these low levels tend to drop. Um, bags, whereas when they're like 10 and above, they tend to drop greens and blues. No, 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 you're not going anywhere. Sweet. Oops. So what did we get? Oh, we did get another bag. Nice. And I tend to Oh, that Murloc caught out right onto us. I tend to keep my Hearthstone in the last slot of my bag, just so that it's easier for me to junk, or to sell all of the the junk in my inventory. Although it looks like we got a mace there. Although I think for... Yeah, we can't use it. I mean, we can use it, but we're not going to. Because for the assassination specialization, its primary ability, Mutilate, requires daggers. And you need to have both be daggers. So... That would not work. We could get some bracers, though. Some junk bracers, but better than nothing. I'm going to hold on to this linen cloth in case we need it. Alright. It... Okay, for a second I thought the murloc like, ran away. Just because there's no like name above it or anything. And it kind of blends in with the terrain. Yeah. But this still counts as like a, a neutral NPC, so the uh, aggressive enemies around here won't attack him. And it won't give away my stealth position. I mean, to another player you might, but wouldn't really matter because we're not high enough level to be automatically flagged for PvP. This is on a PvP server because I figured it would be kind of fun <laughs> for the recording anyways if we got ganked sometimes. Oh, interesting. So even though we're friendly to this guy, his little, like, um, stealth awareness icon popped up when we're stealthed. I did not know that. Okay, let's turn in. Actually, let's, let's go talk to the dude who wanted the Murloc first. Alright, Cedric Calston. Speak quickly. Oh, look at him. Isn't he the most adorable thing you've ever seen? Thank you, Rezotis. I feel more energetic already. Yeah, no problem, friend. Ooh, a lot of experience. And level up. Dope. You don't get anything for it, but that's okay. Alright, then the Apothecary. Or, I was calling him Apothecary. It's a Apothecary. Derp. Were you able to gather ten pumpkins yet? Yeah, I got your pumpkins right here, boss. You have performed your bidding well, young rogue. You are proving yourself to be quite an asset to the Dark Lady's army. Yeah, people keep telling me that. But I'm not getting any recognition around here. These pumpkins have a purpose, rogue. They'll be the delivery mechanism for my latest batch of plague, which would be a particularly painful and virulent concoction. However, the plague requires a few rare ingredients. We'll need marrow petals, which grow at the bottom of the still water pond just to the east of here. We also need Zavran's Horn, which grows on rocky cliffs to the northwest. Finally, we need some briny sea cucumbers found in the surf off of Winter Spring Shore. Or Whisper Spring. Whispering Shore, wow. Alright. Gradient hunting. 
And finally, you've got the makings of a mighty rogue undead. I heard the cries of those humans from all the way over here. Perhaps soon we will be rid of this human blight. Hey, another dagger. Nice. We need someone with initiative. <laughs> like that air quotes, initiative. Like yourself to drive the Scarlet Crusade to the grave. Prove to me you are capable of serving the Dark Lady by traveling west to the tower past the Saladin farmstead and slaying ten warriors of the Scarlet Crusade. Sure, I can do that. Just throw this dagger on. We'll replace our main hand first, and then use our previous main hand dagger as our offhand. There we go. So those wimpy little butter knives. Alright, where's Gordo? Sell all this stuff. And uh, let's do the uh, the kill quest first, and then we'll go and get all those ingredients for the other quest. I believe, yeah, we actually <laughs> uh, walked past one of those or stealth past one of the Scarlet Warriors uh, when we were doing the Murloc quest, so they're just over here. First target found. It's probably going to be a lot more fast forwarding too. Just because we have to kill 10 of these dudes. And there's nothing else to really do here. Well actually I guess just to the north there is the um, Marnie Sea Cucumbers I think it is. And the uh, Zavran's Thorn. Alright but we'll zoom through this and then we'll get to the uh, collecting. Oh. Uh. Oh, okay. We picked up a quest item off of the um, the mob we just killed, which automatically brought up a prompt for another quest to turn in this Scarlet Letter. Prove to me you are capable of serving the Dark Lady by traveling west to the Tower of Pathos. Oh. Wait, that's the same. Same um, text. Okay, that's kind of buggy. Uh, oh, I see. We have to click on this. <laughs> Lieutenant Gebler, I'm aware I'm aware I'm being attacked right now, but it's not going to kill me. How curious that you would decide to take a prisoner, an undead one at that. What were you thinking? Do you think that just because of the prisoner's former status, that she would be above the edicts of the Scarlet Crusade? This is most troubling, Gebler. I would like to remind you that there are penalties for such behavior. I command you to execute the prisoner at once. She is no longer one of us. Alright, now we got the quest. <laughs> oh, this chick actually almost did kill me. I think that wasn't a very long, um... Very long letter. Om nom 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 nom. Alright, that's the last one we needed to kill, and as luck would have it, that uh, Scarlet Letter quest actually requires us to go in this tower here. So let's see what that's all about. I should just be able to sneak past this guy. Oh no, got too close. So it doesn't make you completely invisible, but it does drastically reduce the uh, radius of which enemies will aggro onto you. And I thought I could sneak past him there. But he was too keen for that. <laughs> What about you? Are you? Oh, hold on. I ever heard a face away. Don't worry about it. I'm not here. Oh, god damn. Alright. <laughs> Let's try that again with less derp. Oh, did it. Alright, cool. I regret jumping off made me, you know, waste enough time that would have just been quicker to attack, but... And what can you do? Oh, look who it is. It's Lillian Voss. What would you ask of death? What are you doing here? Get out of here. Oh, hold up, Lillian. 
Gotta dispatch this warrior. Okay. What is it? Anyways, before I was so really interrupted, I'm here to rescue you. First of all, I don't need to be rescued. Second of all, I'd never allow myself to be rescued by an abomination like you. Lillian, you're one of the Forsaken, like me. Which brings to the question, why did the Scarlet Crusade put you in the cage? They usually kill undead on sight. I'm not undead. Not for long, anyway. My father will rescue me. I know it. Your father? Remember, yes, my... Wait, be quiet. I hear the lieutenant coming. Or approaching. The time has come, my little captive. Word has come back from your father. Gebler, you came. What did he say? High Priest Faust announces you as a daughter. He's ordered you to that you be exe ugh, executed immediately. What? No, this can't be. Gebler, you know me. We were friends once. Uh, oh geez, too much, too much talking too fast. Unfortunately, you are too dangerous in life, and you're far too dangerous in death. I will enjoy killing you, you scourged witch. Aw, oh, snap. Gebler, father, why would you? And things just took a very interesting turn. The world of the living may have turned its back on me. Uh, but I'm no damn scourge. Just go. Alright, well, good luck getting out of that cage, I guess. I'm going to just drop down here for the quick exit. Alright, now let's go gather up these precious materials for this man's potion. So yeah, we should just be able to drop down here. <laughs> we can actually see where they all are, thanks to the um, outlining added in Warlords of Draenor. Please be deep, thank you. So I have to gather eight of these little dudes. But fortunately, only four of the each of the other materials. Oh, well, they're all like clustered up right there. I wonder if we can get them on the move too. That's nice. Actually, can I? I wonder if I can use them when mounted. Oops. Uh, macros. I'm just doing this because I actually have an underwater mount. Makes me swim a little bit faster. Nope, makes me demount. Oh well. And the last sea cucumber. Excellent. Alright, let's pop back into stealth mode and get up to those flowers. Or thorns, whatever. That's one. And they all—they just seem to go along the ledge here, so it's gonna be very quick to gather them all up. Three, and the last one. And finally, we just need to get Marrow Petal, which is just in this lake to the east of a. Uh, what is this? Brill? No, Brill is the next town. The Kelton Estate here. Well, 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 look what we have here. Another rare mob. Bane. It's gonna go down pretty easily. It does do a fair bit of damage in his defense. But look at that experience, 1,238. That's like two quests worth of experience there. Oh yeah, it's getting level two. 
many, many more to go. Right, but the lake is just down here, so I guess that was pretty good luck on our part. Are they? I think they're just in the water as well. Yeah, they're underneath. It's kind of annoying. I don't like, I don't like uh, underwater objectives as well, just because it it's so slow to swim compared to your regular move speed. Of course, I do have the mount, but you can't gather while mounting, or while mounted. And it takes time to cast the mount itself, so you don't really save any time by mounting up after each one. Okay, now let's go turn all this in. Hello there, little mousy. Or rat. My deepest apologies. Now that I think about it, this is kind of, it's like it's a, it's an estate here, surrounded by a wall, but it, it's just kind of open. I don't know how to like explain. It just seems kind of weird to me. You just have this one lone house. The bunch of different people living in it. But only like two rooms in it. Like you have this room down here and then you go up and you have the bedroom up there. I am forsaken. It looks at us expectantly. Oh, we have two quests. Okay. Let's turn in the Scarlet Palisade first. Most excellent rogue. Your skill in the art of combat is undeniable. Damn right. Beware, Ooh, level up. Sweet. Letter. What does it say? The Scarlet Crusade takes no prisoners. That they would do with that they would do so with this young woman. Curious. The powers that you described to me are even more curious. She passed through the bars of her prison and killed her captor. Why hadn't she done that in the first place? I don't know, dude. Why don't you go ask her? I am forsaken. Hmm, I've got a feeling that this will be my best batch yet, a good rogue. <laughs> my good sir. I'll turn on all those ingredients. What do we get for it? Another bag. Okay. Oh, and some gloves. Dope. All right, I'll take it. Excellent work. Now comes the fun part. Harmless pumpkins, right? Or so it would seem. If we are to defeat the scourge advances from the north and the human infestation from the south, we need to start realizing the full potential of our gift of undeath. With a little ingenuity, a simple pumpkin becomes an agent for a dark lady. This pumpkin, laced with my latest formula, will prove to be quite a treat. Yet another scarlet zealot has been captured and is being kept outside by the gazebo. Take this pumpkin to the fool. Alright. Let me uh, throw on these new gloves. So now we got little mitts for our hands. It's pretty nice. Let's, uh, we will relocate all of our inventory stuffs. Let's see. Oh, we have another quest to pick up from Gordo. Let's talk to him first. Gordo like picking flowers. Pick flowers, kind of like killing. Master wants weeds. Us got big hands and not good at picking. You help us and we not hurt you. Us need gloom weed. Many weeds around here and near road. When you have gloom weed, you take to Master Holland in Brill. Alright, sure, big guy. Whatever you need. Captured Scarlet Zealot. Stay away, foul and unholy creature. May the light protect me. The Scarlet Crusade shall rid, Az shall rid Azeroth of your... Oh. Wait. Is that food for me? I am so hungry. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly what it is, buddy. By the light. Finally, some food. Sweet, sweet pumpkin. I... I don't feel right. My mind. My flesh. I am rotting. That was a pretty sudden transformation. And then he fell into two parts and died. Rest in peace. Oh, okay, there's nothing to turn in. We just have to gather up these gloom weeds. Alright. 
they seem to be pretty spread out. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen a lot of them somewhere before, but I don't recall where that was exactly. But this could take a while. Oh, we only needed three. I thought we needed like eight for some reason. Okay. Well, then we just have to get to Brill, which is the next town. I like Brill. Brill's pretty neat. It's just right outside the Undercity, too. Which is my least favorite Horde side city. Besides maybe Silver Moon City. Like, Undercity thematically is pretty cool, but once you get inside, it's kind of messed up. Like, the layout and everything is what makes me not like it. And then Silvermoon City. I guess it's a fine city and all. I just really don't like Blood Elves. At all. Right. Oh, hey look, there's a quest for us up here. Death Guard Dillinger. I wonder what he has for- actually, I think I know what we have to do. It's gonna be like seven fetid claws, right? I think that's even the specific item name. What would you ask of death? What are you looking for? Oh, actually, it actually has two quests for us. Okay. A putrid task. The scourge have tickled- trickled into tears fog glades and are infesting this area- or have infested this area. I need someone to beat back the rotting dead and ravaged corpses that have taken this small farm. Scatter their bones and bring back their putrid claws. Okay, putrid claws, not fetid claws. The Death Guards will reward you. Farewell. What are you looking for? Then the new Forsaken. Speaking, frankly, the Forsaken of yesteryear were a sniveling, pathetic group. We huddled together in decrepit old human buildings, hiding from the Scourge, cowering from the Alliance, and groveling at the foot of the Horde. Look before you now and see the product of the new Forsaken. We have made our mark here on Azeroth, and that mark will continue to grow. Or, and that mark will grow. Our dominion will soon blanket the world. You want my advice? Speak with Magistrate Severin and Brill. Down this road. He runs that town. Okay, so let's get some putrid claws from these fools. And this is when we start getting into quests without 100% drop rates, I'm pretty sure. That kind of sucks. One for one. Let's see if this guy will drop one. Okay, maybe maybe uh, maybe they do still have hundred percent drop rates. I'm gonna fast forward some more. I won't always fast forward all the combat. Like once I get better items and more abilities, and it'll be more interesting to play and to watch. Um, we won't fast forward as much, but for now, see you in a minute. Sweet. Seven out of seven. All right, let's just go turn in this quest. And then I think that'll be all he has for us, and then we just go to Brill to turn in the others. Let's see. Oh, hiding behind the uh, the directions I see. Speak quickly. Have you completed the task with which I've charged you? Do you have those putrid claws? Why, yes, I do. Very er, well done. I enjoyed watching you smash those undead into rotting pulp. It's a bit morbid. Hey, if you pay me for it. All right, I think I'm going to call that an episode for today. This uh, recording has gone on a little bit longer than the others by about, you know, seven or eight minutes. So, uh, hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.